In this video, we're going to look at what an equation is, and we're going to look at solving some really simple equations just to get us started. So the first question we might have is, what is an equation? So an, an equation is just a mathematical statement that contains an equal sign, and really importantly, it must contain an equal sign in order to be an equation. So for example, 3 plus 4 equals 7, that's an equation. 0.3 times 10 is equal to 2 plus 1. That's also uh, an equation. And an algebraic equation is just an equation that has at least one pronumeral or one variable. Okay, and that pronumeral stands for an unknown number. So this is an algebraic an equation because we've got one unknown, that n. 3n is equal to 12. 5 minus k is equal to 3k y is equal to x squared plus 4. These are all algebraic equations. And often what we want to do in maths is we want to find out what that unknown number is by solving the equation. OK, so when we solve an equation, uh, the method that we're going to use is we're going to work backwards just undoing each of the operations. So in order to work backwards, you need to work in reverse order and you need to use the opposite operation. So, um, okay, the op opposite operations you need to know for now is that addition and subtraction are opposite to each other. And then multiplication, sorry, multiplication and division are opposites to each other. Okay, the reason they're opposites is, is if you started with a number, say you started with two, okay, and you added five to it, if you then did the opposite of add five, like subtract five, you would just end up with two. So you end up where you started again. So adding something and then subtracting it is an opposite operation. Same with multiplication and division. If I start with two again and say I times it by five, so that would give me 10, and then I divided that by five, I would end up with two. So I'm back to where I started. Okay, so opposite operations or sometimes called inverse operations. They just undo each other, okay? So we need to use this to solve equations. Let's just take a look at a, uh, a word problem first. So this guy is saying, I add four to a number, I multiply the answer by seven, and I get 84. What was my number, okay? Now in order for, for this person here to figure out what his number was, she's gonna have to work backwards. So let's take a look, close a closer look at what he's done. So he adds four to a number. Um, so if we start with any number, let's just say the number is n, okay? The first thing he did, okay, was he added four to that number, okay? Then he multiplied by seven, so I'm gonna write times by seven, and that gave him an answer of 84. So to work out what he started with, we're going to work backwards. We're going to start with his answer, which was 84, and then we're going to do the opposite. We're going to divide 84 by 7, and then we're going to do the opposite of adding 4, which is to subtract 4, and that's going to give us our answer. So do you see, we're just working backwards in the opposite order. So 84 divided by 7 gives us 12. If I take four away from 12, I get an answer of eight. So the number that he started with was eight. So let's see if we can check to see if our answer is right. Okay, let's say we, we would do eight, that number, add four to that, and then multiply our answer by seven, and we should get 84. Let's see if that works. Eight plus four is 12, times seven gives me 84. So I'm right. Okay, so you can see that by working backwards and undoing each of the operations, we can we can work out what the unknown number is. So let's apply this to some really simple examples. And these examples you'll probably be able to work out just by looking at them, but we're gonna look at them mathematically anyway, just to get us started. So in this case, our unknown is H and we're adding three to it, and we get an answer of nine. 
So if I draw that flow, flow chart that we did in the, in the previous example, okay, I start with H, I add 3, and I get an answer of 9. So if I'm going to work backwards here, that means that I'll start with 9, I'll subtract 3, and that will give me my answer. Okay, so if I start with 9 and subtract 3, hopefully you got that my answer is 6. So my unknown answer, my unknown variable was 6. Okay, in order to write that algebraically, you can use the flow chart if you want, but when you get into more complicated um, equations, this will probably be, be a bit more difficult. Okay, so writing that uh, algebraically, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what I did was the opposite of add 3, I subtracted 3 to get h on its own. So if I subtract 3 from this side, I'm just left with h. Now whatever I do to one side of an equation, I must always do to another. So I need to subtract 3 from the right hand side as well. Okay, and that means 9 minus 3 is 6. So I get an answer of h is equal to 6. Okay, let's try another example. So in this case, my, my unknown uh, is still h. In this case, I'm subtracting 2, and I get an answer of 3. Okay, so let's work backwards to find out what h is. So working backwards, my answer is 3. Now instead of subtracting 2, I need to add 2. And that will give me h. So 3 add 2 gives me 5, an answer of 5. Okay, let's see. If I take my subtract 2 here, the opposite of that is add 2. And if I add 2 to one side, I must add 2 to the other side. On the left-hand side of the equation, I've got minus 2 add 2, which is just 0. So I'm left with h is equal to 3 plus 2, which is 5. So h is equal to 5, which is what we got here. Now, one important step that I forgot with our first question is just to check our answer. So the way that you do your check is that you substitute what you got for your value back into the original equation. So we found out that h was equal to 5. So instead of h minus 2 is equal to 3, we're going to, well, I'll write that in, h minus 2 is equal to 3. I know h is 5. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I get an equation here that says 3 is equal to 3, which is obviously true. If you, if you get something different here, like 2 is equal to 3, that means that your h was wrong and you need to go back and try and work out what your mistake was. So at the end here, you should always get the left-hand side of the equation equal to the right-hand side. Okay, we're just going to start, uh, sorry, finish off with two more examples. This one here says 4D is equal to 8. Now, the important thing you need to know here that if you have 4D and there's no operation, that means 4 times D. Okay, in algebra, we don't often use the time sign. It, it looks like an X, uh, so that can get a bit confusing. So 4D just means 4 times D. Okay, so let's do a flow chart first. So I started off with D and I multiplied it by 4, and that gave me an answer of 8. So now I'm going to work backwards to find out what D is. So like we did in the other examples, we'll start with 8. Now instead of multiplying by 4, we're going to do the opposite, divide by 4. So 8 divided by 4 gives me an answer of 2. So I should get D is equal to 2. Okay, writing that algebraically, uh, what you would think about here is I've got 4 times D, the opposite of uh, multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4, and we show division uh, using fractions, okay, in algebra, so that means divided by 4. Now, if I divide this side by 4, I also need to divide that side by 4, okay? Now, 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so I'm just left with 1D here, and we know we don't have to put the 1 in, okay? The so 1D, or D, is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2, which is what we got here. So in order to check that we've got the right answer, we're going to substitute d is equal to 2 into the original equation. So 
here's our check. So we had the equation 4d is equal to 8, but we know d is equal to 2. So 4 times 2 is equal to 8. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 is definitely equal to 8, so we've done it right. Okay, last example is going to be division. So we know it's division because we've got d over 5, and that line there means division. Okay, so d over 5 is equal to 2. So we'll start with a flow chart again. So our unknown value is d. What we did is we divided it by 5, and then we got an answer of 2. So let's work backwards to work out what d is. So I start with 2, and now what I do is I multiply it by 5, because that is the opposite of dividing by 5, and I get an answer. 2 times 5 is 10, so d is equal to 10. Now let's do this algebraically. Okay, I've got d divided by 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each side by 5. So if I multiply by 5 on that side, and I multiply by 5 on the right side. So we know that if I multiply something by 5 and then divide it by 5, I'm just left with what I started with. So 5 times d divided by 5 is just d, 1d, is equal to 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, and that's what we got in our flow chart, so we're looking good. One last step is just to check that our answer is correct. So my original equation was d divided by 5 is equal to 2. I know d is equal to 10, so 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and so 2 is equal to 2. And again, I've done it correctly. Okay, so these are just one-step equations, just simple equations to get us started. And the key thing to remember, well, there's two key things. The first is to use the opposite operation. And the second is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation.